All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of Sunrise Talks. So as promised, the last time what we were telling you in the apartment, most of the days we're coming to the rooftop. We have an amazing view. So today have a beautiful sunrise, a uh, little bit covered uh, with clouds. Actually, just wanted to show you real quick, just for you guys to see the amazing view that we have right here, why we do this every day. We have, I don't know if you can see, but those two beautiful mountains, the zone usually comes up right in the middle right now. So you can see it's a little bit covered with clouds, but super clear views. Have beautiful volcano right there, Popocatépetl. We know an expert pronouncing the name. Iztaccíhuatl <laughs> on the left. I'm not sure if that one is a volcano, but yeah. So we have this amazing view. Sun comes out, usually come to the rooftop, sit here and part of our morning routine to just get in the right state, get some sun and uh, yeah. But um, today, that being said, now that we showed you that, let's get back to our usual. So last episode we recorded, what was it? Saturday or Sunday? Mm -hmm. Sunday, Sunday. So today is a Tuesday. So you might think that in three days, not a lot has changed, but fortunately for you, I think the last two or three days were big. We made some big changes. We yeah. spoke about the challenge and uh, yeah, some things that we were going through, we had some big realizations. We're going to start sharing that with you guys. So where should we start? Yeah. I mean, I think the main thing is that all of these ideas that we had in the last three days were not necessarily our ideas. There were just maybe things that we thought about before, but they were organized in a way and we just consumed the information and courses. And that's what gave us ideas. So it goes back to the main thing, which is your inputs equate your outputs. If you're not teaching yourself on a daily basis and learning from people ahead of you, you're not going to be able to you know, progress, right? Because you, like you don't know everything and you don't know what you don't know. So give yourself good inputs, food, sleep, and education, and uh, you'll move ahead. So yeah, I think that's a really good point, right? Like, I mean, part of the challenge is we both cut off consuming Instagram, YouTube, but in a, in a mindless way, right? Because there's a very big difference between consuming with intention and getting yourself the right input out of your head. And this is also information because I think one of the most, you know, complicated things today is that like overload of information, right? So you have to be, have very good filters. So we're both learning freaks. We love to read and with you know, bought like a lot of courses, right? So in one of them, part of us just, again, as we told you, we're still defining the last parts of the challenge, making sure that we get like the right things in place in terms of the business specifically. We don't, in one of his courses, found an amazing video that we went through and we made some big changes in realizations we had after watching that video. And yeah, just as an update, we realized that, yeah, some of these things that we have here for the challenge are really, really good, but, or at least for me personally, I think I was emphasizing, putting a lot of emphasis or emphasizing a lot on the personal side of things. And in the end, we're in a season of growing our businesses. That is a priority. And I heard a mentor of mine once said that, like, you have to look at your priorities and then you have to look at your calendar. And if your calendar does not reflect your priorities, then you're lying to yourself, right? So I saw my calendar and for me personally, I was putting way too much effort, resources, time, energy, and attention into the fitness side of things. So I was like two workouts a day, a lot of like things that go around that, the meal tracking, stretching, etc., which is good. But again, in this season that it's like business is number one priority, we made some changes. So I shifted some things from the calendar, probably going to change some of the things in the challenge that are related to the personal side of things and just going heavier on the business. And yeah, that was a big realization for me this last two or three days. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I think we can share what we learned and why we made those changes and we're going to go ahead. Um, as always, the board. Yeah. So basically it's, we realized that, well, but the video was explaining was the different stages that people have to go through, specifically in coaching businesses, but actually in general service based online or probably in person businesses. And not necessarily the things that you should only focus on, although that could be a good idea, but more so the biggest constraints, right? Because, I mean, you could say marketing is important in the first stage of 10 to 30K per month in the coaching business, right? Which is, right? You need to market yourself. But at the end of the day, if your offer is not good, you're not going to be able to book calls or close people because unless you're an amazing salesperson, right? And so 
we we want to kind of show you what we learned and i think that's that's really going to be helpful for a lot of people i don't know if you're in the frame but yeah we'll get it okay so let's see if i can design a decently accurate representation again guys it didn't go to art school so please roast me in the comments so arrows that are not straight basically this is going to be divided into four stages mainly but mo mostly focusing on three stages and this is credit to armin shafi learning a lot from him kaitigerconsulting.com coaching.com so you know this concept is from, is from him yeah it's just credit is given where credit is due exactly and so we're going to divide this into three main stages so we have 10 to 30k now we have 100k per month zero 100k per month i also learned that month is not spelled m-o-n it's actually m-o I was doing this wrong the whole time. So great. Awesome. And this is 250K. So these are the three main stages of a coaching business, right? Now, the way that the video was explaining is that it, at each of these stages, right, to get from each, from one point to another checkpoint, right, you have different challenges that are going to come up, right? Business as a whole does have a lot of different things, but there's like three main things that in each stage you have to focus on that typically tend to be the constraints. That if you don't fix those, like you could be great at leadership, right? Which is one of the things you have to do here. But like, if you just, if you don't have a great offer, like you're not going to get to 10K, you know? So it's yeah. Pretty simple. So I think a really good point about that is it doesn't mean that you don't need the other skills. It means that that is the 20% that is going to give you the 80% of the result that you're looking in each of the stages, right? Or at least that was a really good thing for me uh, yeah. to understand. So yeah, the three points that he mentions in each of these stages, which is what we were analyzing yesterday in combination with a couple other concepts from other programs and books, like from the both books of Hermosi, uh, because that was a really good complement to some of the stuff there, and we'll explain it in a second. Yeah. But basically understanding that with these three main points that we're going to share in each of the stages, it's that, that is the main bottleneck. So I think it's the whole, like, I don't know if it's called constraint theory mm -hmm. or bottleneck theory, where basically the whole point is that you need, because, I mean, there's a lot of things going on in the business, right? Like, even if when you're going from 0 to 10, 30K, you need to be doing a lot of things, right? You need to be... I mean, you need to create your offer, you need to deliver, you need to generate leads somehow, you need to sell. But again, but from all of the stuff that you're doing, there are certain things that are the main constraints that if you solve those, the business is going to move forward faster, right? So those are the things that we're going to focus on right now or what we learned yesterday. So the three main points means that those are the bottlenecks that you should solve if you want to jump to the next step. But it does mean that that is the only thing that you should be doing, right? Like this is just like the main, the main ones. Got an earthquake, guys. This is very common and uh, like for city, we just freaked out. So, yeah, if we don't post a video for a week, we're probably, um, yeah, not doing well, anyways. So, the three main kind of constraints are belief from zero to 10k, right? And zero to 30k are belief. Okay, I'd rather just bring just gonna make it easier for our beautiful audience. Okay, got it. I and yeah, he's an INTJ, by the way. I'm an IFJ, INFJ makes an interesting combination. Apparently, INTJs have better letters, better font. Okay, believe offer and sales. Exactly. So, what, what does this mean, right? It's like a lot of people just think like, yeah, just get out there and sell. Absolutely, right? But you have to do that. But if you don't have these three things in place, you're not going to progress. At least that's what we learned, right? Basically, like if you don't believe that you can sell high ticket, right? If you don't, if you don't believe that you can sell something for 5K or that you should actually go out there because your product is already good enough, right? Or you, you feel like you don't deserve, you know, high ticket or you don't deserve to get clients already because you're not good enough at your service yet then it's like, you're not, you're not going to get out there, right? And sell. So this is the biggest one is belief. And that's what we realized for us as well. And it, it was mostly on like, the, the thing is that you have four main stages of like education about a specific topic, right? You have unconscious incompetence, right? You don't know how bad you are. Then you have conscious incompetence and then conscious competence. And then eventually unconscious incompetence, right? So you go from not knowing how bad you are to knowing how bad you are to knowing that you're actually pretty good to not knowing how good you are, right? And because of that, like 
some of the concepts in business, like we're definitely like conscious competence or incompetence con or unconscious competence. But some things we still think that we're and we, we know how much we have to learn, right? That there's so many levels, right? So we feel we're kind of like stuck mindset wise in conscious incompetence, right? But that's not really helping us because our products are actually pretty good. But we were worried that our products were not going to be really good, even though like it's probably better than most products out there in the industry, right? And so because of that, that's one of the biggest beliefs that we want to overcome. So, yeah, I think that was a big realization. And I mean, we've both been in this entrepreneur game in the coaching industry, me for four years, Guido for six years. And we've developed a lot of really good skills. I mean, Guido was a closer for a while. He was a top closer for one of like the top companies in the industry. I've been doing setting. I've had multiple offers. And so we both had a lot of skills and we've been packing them and we've both invested thousands and thousands of dollars in different courses, mentors and programs also from top names in the industry. So in terms of like the skills that we had on paper, I would argue that we're pretty good in the things that we have and we have a pretty good record. But the problem is that we're focusing on the wrong bottlenecks or, or in, the, in the wrong order, right? And maybe we're going to be able to dive a little bit deeper once we write the other ones down. But I think this one was a big realization for us yesterday because, I mean, as we said, we both have a pretty decent record in all of these things. And I mean, as we've mentioned it before, like we've both made, we've both had months before where we've made 10K, but it hasn't been consistent. So it's not like we, that we've been able to just like hit that level where we're like consistently making somewhere from 10 to 30K a month. And after analyzing it, we realized that for us, I think right now at this stage, it all came down to belief. And that was a big realization. And we're focusing on like solving other constraints, but we started doing that. So using that example, I mean, I can give a real life, life example. So one of my first coaching offers that I created, I honestly, just to be completely fully honest and transparent, I didn't have proper guidance back then. I think the mentors, I was like brand new to the, to the game. It was like three years ago. And my coach was like, yeah, you just got to build an offer. This is how you market this, how you sell. And you have to sell high tickets. So I was like, but I don't know how I'm going to deliver. He's like, no worries. You'll figure that out later. Just sell high tickets, sell, sell 5k. So, uh, I mean, me personally, I think it's a lesson that I learned after being failed as a customer by the coaching industry and paying thousands of dollars to programs that were shit. And also me learning this lesson as a coach when I convinced people to give me money and realized that I wasn't delivering the value that I promised. So after learning all of that during these last three to four years, I was like, okay, every offer that I'm making right now, I want to make sure that I'm delivering at least 10 times more value than what I'm charging. Because for me, that's the way that I like to do business. I think business is that gap between how much you price your offer and the value that you give in return. Because the bigger that gap, the bigger that discrepancy, the better your business. Just think about it this way. It's the whole analogy probably guys heard about Armozi. Like if I have a Ferrari and you see this, like literally have a Ferrari here, like you believe me, you see the car and you know, those cars are worth anywhere from over 200K. And I tell you like, hey, here are the keys. If you give me 10K for the car right now, like would you, would you buy it? And even if you don't have the 10K right now, you would probably do anything, like whatever you can in your power right now to just find out the 10K wipe because you know that you're, you're just giving me 10K and getting 200K back in return. So that's the whole point uh, with offers. So learn that lesson. But just to give you that example, like back then, they showed me how to create an offer, not how to deliver. And I was able to convince people and to sell them a 5K offer. And I had people that paid me that. So, and I think that was the, how do you call it? The first one, the, when you don't know, First offer? Okay. Yeah, the the competence, like what were, what were the stages? Uh, like Unconscious incompetence. Unconscious incompetence. Like I, I was, I, I was like my coach back then made me believe that I was like going to be able to sell that. So I literally back then just had the belief, like I honestly didn't know how to deliver properly three years ago. So because I had the belief, I was able to deliver on that offer. But now four years, three years later, since that offer that I've just packed myself with skills and with really good testimonials of me being able to deliver. I wasn't feeling like, I don't know how to like, I wasn't having the belief to sell at that price, even though my offers, my deliveries and my skills were literally 10 or 20 times better than back then. So it was all tied to belief. So I realized that I was like, how the fuck was I able to sell at 5k if I'm not feeling good right now and doing that, if my products and the results that I'm getting for people with the testimonials are literally 20 times better than what they were before. So we realized that, yes, belief has a really, really powerful, it's really, really powerful and impactful at this stage of the business. So something that we both have to work on. So now that we realize that, 
one thing that we did the last two days is we worked really, we worked on our offers. So we basically both changed our offers. And I mean, as you can see, sun is starting to come out. So hopefully you guys can still see, but yeah. So what we did this last two days after realizing this, we worked on our offers. So we literally sat down, I think it was three hours. We worked on Widow's offer. Then we, I mean, I kind of already had something because I started the offer that I'm working on already like three months ago, but still, no, actually four months ago, yeah. still used. So I used all of the feedback from like the 30 people that I've worked with and the testimonials and the results that I had to like refine my offer. And I think we both came up with something like something big for each of us. So that was a really, really cool thing that we did in the last two days. So now we're shifting into just going all in with selling. Right? Exactly. Now we just need to put ourselves out there. But the fact that we have the belief that we should do that and sell high ticket, the fact that we have a more solid offer than before, and the fact that we're really good at sales already, it's, this is why now we're going to consistently make 10 to 30 K because think about it. I mean, to get to 10 K, if you're selling at 3 K, you just need three clients. If you're selling at 5 K, you need two clients. Like that means you need four, five, six, maybe eight calls at the worst, let's say 10 calls per month. Like you don't need that many calls to close 10 K, right? If you're selling at 5 K, but the problem is if you're selling something at 500 bucks or a thousand, like you're never going to get there. Now, if you're just starting out in your offer and you need some confidence, right? Belief. Right. You're not going to take action long enough if you don't believe they should be signing 5k because you don't know what you're doing. Right. So in that case, just sell for free, help for free. Right. But yeah. So I think that's an important thing. When they speak about belief, it's not fake belief. It's not the bullshit belief where you just wake up and you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm good. I can deliver results. No, it's true belief. It's like you have undeniable proof that you're good at what you're doing. You can deliver results. So as Widow said, if you're just starting out, that's what I did. Like when I started with this offer, even though I literally Took, so I started my business four years ago. Beginning of 2023, I was like, okay, I don't like where this is going. I don't feel confident enough. Like my, what was it? Unconscious incompetence became conscious incompetence. So I was like, okay, I need to take a step back and develop, get better as a coach to be able to deliver. So I literally, that's what I did. I took a step back, shut down my business. I started working for another coaching industry as a setter. So I, I was like, I, I still want to have money coming in and still get, be getting some reps in a skill that I can eventually use for my business. And I went only into getting better as a coach myself. So then I built my product after six months of just working on that, on my skills in delivery specifically and the thing that I wanted to do, build the game plan, launched my offer. And even though I was like, okay, I know this is really, really good and it's going to help a lot of people because I, I know the work that went into it with all of the experience that I gained. Um, I was like, I'm, I, I don't have that on the now proof yet that it's going to deliver results for people. So I literally brought in some people for free. And then I started just increasing the price slowly. So then I was like, okay, I'm selling this for 500 bucks. And that's what I did. Then I raised it to 1K. And I literally had people telling me like, bro, this is worth 10K. This is worth 5K. And I think that is a way better feeling because that gives you that real belief and non-conditional like proof, on on denial proof, sorry, versus what we've both experienced in the past where we, I mean, where I sold something and people told me like, ah, it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth that. Like I would 100% rather have someone that tells me like, bro, this is worth 10 times what you're charging versus someone telling me like, bro, this wasn't worth what I paid. So I think that's a good point of view. So if you're just starting out and you don't have that belief yet, again, it doesn't have to be like false belief. It's just sell your stuff for free for the first five people, build that confidence, that belief, get that feedback, and then start increasing your price from there. Because that gives you that real belief, right? Like you can't lie to yourself. So absolutely. So that's 10 to 30K, right? Now, from here on out to get to 100K, these are the next three things. Why not? Right. So it's leads. leads. Vision. And then ego. And maybe this is going to surprise a lot of you guys. Like, question for you. Yeah. I think it's worth for us to dig deep into this too, if we're at this stage or just explain. Um, we can just cover quickly and then just go ahead. And uh, we're not going to dedicate too much too long to this because, you know, it's, uh, we both don't necessarily help people like in this stage because, you know, it's not for now at least the people we want to help. Uh, but basically at this stage, you just need to do more of what works. So once you have offer fit, right? Yeah. Offer fit and you're selling high enough, at least 5k, you have the belief, right? And you have the proof that people really want what you have. And you give results. Exactly. You give results. And so you keep your promises, right? Which is important. And you're really good at selling. You're easily going to get to 30k. And then from there, you need to just get more leads, more calls on the calendar, 
qualify them, right? Before the call, the call vision, right? You need to understand like, why are you doing this? Right? Cause you could, you could think that, you know, it's fine. Like it, I want to grow, but why do you want to grow? Right? You need yeah. to understand the reasons I, it's hard. I think the important thing there is that things become exponential. That's happened to us. Like yeah. if you start doing something, because in the end, when you're starting from zero, you have no idea, right? So you start from zero, let's say that you make some sales, which is what happened to me. Like when I had that offer back then of 5k, I was able to cross the 10k. I, I, I had like a 14, like a 15k month. And after a couple of months, after working with people with that offer, I realized that I didn't like what I was doing. Like, I just didn't feel aligned with it. That offer wasn't good. So what they say is like, once you cross this, like if you hate what you're doing, just to keep going and, and put more leads, it's just going to make that exponential. So yeah. that's what the whole vision is about. Just making sure that you are in alignment with what you're doing. Because again, if you get to this point and you realize that that wasn't like really aligned with what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with it. You can always go back and refine your offer based with the feedback that you got. Because in the beginning, you're you're blind, right? You're just like, come up with a hypothesis. Like, hey, this is what I want to do. These are the people that I want to help. But you don't actually know. So you actually put yourself in the market. You get some reps in. You get some real feedback. So that's, for example, something that happened to me. I did that, had this offer. I actually had a really good month, had some people come in. But then I realized that this is not the thing that I see myself doing for the next 10 years. And I wouldn't enjoy or I, I wouldn't be able to sustain doing this for instead of just three people per month for, for 10, 20, 30 people, like I would hate myself. So that's the whole point of the vision. Just making sure that whatever you're doing, you're aligned with it, because as long, as soon as you start pouring more leads into it, those feelings are going to become exponential. So I think it's that part of alignment. Then yeah. the last one. Well, the last one, you know, for most of you is not going to be relevant. So perhaps. No, I mean, uh, ego. Oh, ego. Well, ego in this case can, you know, show in a lot of different ways. Mainly it's just thinking that you're better than you actually are because like people think that 30k per month or 50 is like a lot but it's not like a lot of people are making 10 times that or more and they're still not I mean you you're know, still nobody in the market like yeah like maybe you just got lucky right like that's I mean, the thing about it if you're getting five clients at or six clients at 5k like six clients per month even though yes 30k could be life-changing and that's why i mean again in the only perspective right if you're going from zero to making 30k a month Obviously, it's a lot of money can be life changing, but in terms of like the market and the business, you're still a nobody. Like yeah, you are. So it's mainly mainly just keeping that ego in check and not hiring a bunch of people because now you want to expand like Bill Gates. You know, like the most important thing is to understand like you just want to you want to keep it lean, keep doing the same things and just do more of it. Right. Like delay hiring people. Make sure when you hire, you hire based on constraints, not based on like what you feel like you should be hiring or you know the whole thing of like you got to build a team. Right. And that's, that's about it. Yeah. Right. So the last thing, because yeah, I don't think it's worth speaking about this. So in the end, this is what we learned, but again, we're both right now at this stage. This is what we learned. Our hypothesis, we're going to be walking you guys through as we work on this and get to this point this year. So something that we realized, this is all an equation where things are being multiplied, right? So in order to make money, everything needs to be in place. So that's another big thing. So we were like, okay, I was like, okay, if I have a really good offer, that should be good. No. If I have good leads or a lot of leads coming in, that should be good. Or if I'm really good at closing, I should be good. Or if I have a ton of belief, I should be good. No, like this, these things, it's like four variables that are multiplying each other, right? So what does that mean? That even if just one of them is zero, you won't get results. Every single thing needs to be in place. Again, it doesn't have to be a huge number. It just, you just have to make sure that this just is not zero. Why? Because if you have the best offer in the world, you have a good amount of leads coming in and you're pretty good at closing, but you have zero belief. It's just not going to happen. If, if belief is zero, it's not going to happen. Same thing. Like if you have a really good amount of leads coming in, you're really good at closing, you have a ton of belief, but your offer sucks. Again, no results. So you have, everything needs to be in place in order for you to be successful. So with that being said, then the question is, okay, where do you put your focus on? And that's this whole point right here. So as you can see, we have from the four things that we have here, which is belief, offer, leads, and closing, which is sales, basically. From that video that we saw, leads is something that you should focus on in stage two. But again, I mean, in the end, so with this reference, what you just need to make sure is that you have some leads coming in. So you just have to make sure that this is not zero. And then you have to focus on solving these other constraints. So putting as long as this is not zero. And I mean, as he was saying, like in the beginning, you have to make sure that your offer is good and that you're really good at closing and that you have a lot of belief. Because then once those three things are in place, then yes, it's just an... A, a, a matter of just increasing the amount of leads, right? And that makes a lot of sense to me because, I mean, based on what I hear, and Widow uh, more, has more expertise in the 
closing world than me, but going from, let's say, a 30% closing rate to a 40%, it like requires way more effort than going from, let's say, having 10 calls on your calendar to 20 calls, right? Yeah. So it's all about how you allocate your resources. So I think that's a really big realization. So for us, as we said, we realized that this is our biggest bottleneck, was belief. And I mean, we both, I think, good at making offers. So as I said, last two days, we spent it on making really good offers. I think we have enough to generate an enough amount of leads to, again, right now, in order for us to hit this, we just need to be closing two to five people per month, which is not a lot just to get to the 30K a month and making sure that we're delivering amazing results. So, so yeah, um, this was another big realization, right? Just make sure that you have everything needs to be in place. As long as it's not zero, you can play the game, right? So just make sure that you have some way of bringing in leads, do whatever you can do. If you have a really good offer that delivers results, that has a really solid foundation, that is targeting a good avatar, that has the right price that will allow you to hit this with not a lot of closes, and that you're good at closing and they have enough leads. So yeah, I think Absolutely. that's how we summed it up. So, yep. so you got to go, right? I do, yes. So with that being said, maybe this was a little bit shorter than the last one, but I mean, yeah, in the end, this is what we learned. Obviously, we're not here yet. So we will be keeping you guys updated and you will be walking Ooh. the walk with us as we go through the journey. So yeah, this week, we literally, as we said, we just checked the offer. We refined it. We have we both came up with really, really good offers. So now it's all about, we're just going to start blasting, doing whatever we can to just get people on the phone, close them, start delivering. So yeah, and start hitting 10 to 30K per month consistently. So absolutely. That's a lesson. We're going to make some changes in the challenge, the things that we're going to be doing each day, focusing more on business. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you did until today and walking this journey with us, we will see you on the next one, right? Peace.